Hi, this is Swati Sila from the software testing help.com team. And in this segment, we are going to uh, talk a little bit about equivalence partitioning. Now, equivalence partitioning is a test data or test case optimization technique. Now, what does this mean? Um, again, my rule of thumb, uh, as always, is um, any technical term literally stand for its name. That means a little meaning of its name is most of the times its definition as well. So uh, let's try to see, uh, you know, what I mean. When we say optimization, we have a certain amount of test data that we supply to the test cases or we have a certain amount of test cases themselves that we need to execute, correct? So in both of these cases, if we did live in a perfect world, we will check with every valid and invalid data or you know invalid test case test condition to make sure whether we are um, whether the application or whether a certain field whether anything is working fine or not now these are the two entities that we are trying to minimize um, you know our effort in so we are trying to reduce the number of them but we are not we do not want to compromise on quality so we, we want to minimize the size but still maximize or at least have the same standard or you know maintain the standard of the quality right so this is the situation that we're trying to see so equivalence partitioning is one such technique that lets us do this in other words it lets us optimize um, the test data or the test cases that we have to provide in order to be able to test the application uh, extensively at the same time finding a uh, you know a middle ground where we are you know not overworking ourselves or you know um, not like you know ex uh, in entering or uh, executing exhaustive number of test cases. So let me give that an example and also, you know, break it down into a very, very simple concept. So we can, when we get to see a real time example, it's all going to make much more uh, sense. So let's say, for example, there is a field, you know, it's a numeric field on a particular, um, you know, web page. And the acceptable values for this field, let's say, is anywhere from zero to a thousand. So if 0 to 1000 is something that this field takes in, so let's, for example, this is um, a loan amount field or something like that. Again, for a loan amount, 0 to 1000 does not make sense, but just for the sake of our example, let's go with this example. Um, let's go with this number, 0 to 1000. Now, when you have a 0 to 1000 uh, numeric range of acceptable values, uh, we have a whole different scenario. So this is the valid input that this numeric field can take. So when it comes to invalid, there's a million other things. For one, outside the range, correct? And um, also um, numeric, alphanumeric, so the format, invalid format, invalid range, all of these are in, you know, invalid scenarios that you can get. So between the valid and invalid, if you were to test this numeric field thoroughly, it's going to take you a lot of input values that you need to provide. And also, when you um, and also this field might be one you know individual field in a page that has a few tens or even hundreds of fields in it. So it's not going to make sense to spend that much time on a numeric field. At the same time, we cannot even ignore it because it's a significant field like the loan amount. So what do we do in that case? So to zero to thousand is not going to be a you know um, meaningful range for us to check if we are going to put in every input value and making sure it works. Nor can we just put take a middle value and you know substitute it and you know um, make it work. So broadly, there are two equivalence partitions that we can make in the sort of input data that we are providing. One is the valid data. One is the input va in invalid data. So these are two partitions that we are making of the kind of data that we are going to uh, have to test. But this is too much broad. So what we can do is I can break down this 0 to 1000 input value into something that is 0 to 9. This is a one digit input. Um, 10 to 99. This is a two digit input. And 100 to 999. A three digit input and 1000 which is a four digit input. So what I've done is instead of exhaustively testing for 0 to 1000 values, I've broken down my input 
into partitions based on the criteria of one digit so all the values in that particular you know um, in that particular partition are equivalent in terms that they have just one digit so if we were to you know follow our ex you know initial um, equivalence partition and call one partition as valid one as invalid this is very broad correct but whatever the data that you provide in the valid partition is all going to lead to you know uh, the input being correct and whatever you put it in the invalid all that data will be in the incorrect category so the valid and in invalid uh, partition are also um, equivalent in the terms that you know whatever value you choose in that particular category is going to yield the same result so here we can divide the input data that you're providing into four subcategories uh, instead of keeping it too broad as valid and invalid we're breaking the valid part itself as um, you know based on one two three and four digits and when it comes to invalid you can choose to be uh, you can choose the partitions to be lesser than the range any data that is greater than the range or um, probably you know alpha you probably would want to do an um, alphabet you know uh, or letters in your um, numeric field or special characters so on and so forth so um, you could divide you could you could uh, you know make your decision on what your valid uh, you know partition can be uh, on what basis you want to break these you know uh, partitions do you want to do it at a high level where there is just valid and invalid or even inside the partitions do you want to go uh, one step further and make sure that you know we are testing much more comprehensive so this basically is equivalence partitioning and it is an optimization technique that lets you pick and choose um, what kind of data, what kind of test cases or test conditions that you want to run in order to achieve the result uh, that, is, that is going to be very much similar to the result uh, had you executed every data set possible. So that's basically what it's saying. It divides the test condition into groups based on an equivalence criteria. So this can be applicable in multiple scenarios. So at the field level, yes. Say for example, there is a banking application that has um, loan amounts again, and depending on the range of the loan amount, there there are different uh, you know percentages of interest that go in. So in that case, how can we you know make sure that um, we choose every data and make sure it's working? Not really. So we are going to break that up into valid ranges and you know um, check like one or to data per partition and make sure that um, the application or the functionality is working fine. So that's equivalence partitioning. Thank you.